All right, good morning, students. Today is your lesson on enzymes. And so your enzymes notes will actually go on page five. And your question for today is, what role do enzymes play in living things and what affects their function? Now, while you're writing this down, remember that I said that enzymes are proteins and they have very special jobs. Some um, are required for your antibodies, some are in your hemoglobin, and then others um, help to digest your food. But we're going to learn about the different roles that enzymes play and how they do their job. First, let's go over our GMAS question for today. The GMAS question number seven asks, which of the following roles does an enzyme play when the body processes sucrose, table sugar, into glucose and fructose? Remember, these are, uh, this is a disaccharide, and then these are monosaccharides, all right? So is it A, an enzyme decreases the body's need for sucrose? Is it B, an enzyme increases the amount of sucrose available? Is it C, the enzyme increases the rate at which the sucrose breaks down? Or is it D, an enzyme decreases the amount of fructose and glucose product available? And your answer for this question will be C, an enzyme increases the rate at which the sucrose breaks down. So all living things um, are going to be made up of chemical compounds, some simple and then some complex. But chemistry isn't just what life is made of. Chemistry is also what life does. So everything that happens in an organism, its growth, its interaction with the environment, its reproduction, and its movement is based on chemical reactions. And so enzymes play a very large role in increasing those chemical reactions, those metabolic processes that happen inside of the organism. So a chemical reaction is a process that changes or transforms one set of chemicals into another. If you remember this from physical science or a little bit of chemistry from middle school, remember that in any equation, in a, in a chemical reaction equation, um, your elements or compounds that enter the chemical reaction are known as your reactants. So those are going to be on the left-hand side. The elements or the compounds produced by a chemical reaction are going to be your products. So those are going to be on the right-hand side of your chemical equation. And then in the middle, you'll see an arrow, which means to yield or to get that particular product. Well, what enzymes will do is they will help to speed up those products to get those products. But the enzymes are not a part of the chemical reactions themselves. Let me repeat that. The enzymes are not actually a part of the chemical reactions, just like a key is not technically the part of the door lock. It's only there to help speed up the process of you getting inside of a room or just to speed up the process of opening the door. But the key is not a permanent uh, element of that door. Okay. So enzymes are a protein catalyst that controls the rate of the chemical reaction. A catalyst is just a chemical that helps to speed up the chemical reaction. So it's a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, how does it do that? In all, um, in all chemical reactions, there's going to have to be what's called an activation energy. An activation energy is nothing more than the reaction or the amount of energy that it's uh, that is required to start a chemical reaction. So make sure that you underline, even though it's not highlighted, activation energy. Now, it just like it takes an incredible amount of energy or gas to start a car, you need a threshold of energy in order to start a chemical reaction. Well, enzymes are catalysts and they help to speed up the rate by lowering the amount of energy that is needed to actually get the chemical reaction started. So catalyst or enzymes are catalysts that lower the amount of activation energy that is needed to speed up the chemical reaction. Now, I think last week I talked about um, when you are faced with any chemicals, uh, names that anything that ends in ose is a sugar. Well, anything that ends in ace is considered an enzyme. So lipase is an enzyme that reacts with lipids to break them down. Just like lactase is an enzyme that reacts with 
lactose to help break that down. So you guys can actually look these up on your own and add them to your notes. What does sucrose react with? And then identify the function of each enzyme, oxidase or hydrolase. So the enzymes, there's actually two types. Either they're going to oxidize or they're going to hydrolyze. Now, what are the different substances? The substance acted upon an enzyme is called the substrate. The enzyme itself is actually going to be the larger molecule. And the place where the substrate and the enzyme actually come together is called your active site. So let's say this is lactase. Lactase is going, uh, lactose, I'm sorry. Lactose is going to be your substrate and lactase is going to be your enzyme to act on it. Where these two meet together is your active site and the enzyme lactase is then going to produce either smaller substances or different products. So it helped to speed up this chemical reaction and you have to know these parts. Now the reactants must collide with enough energy so that existing bonds will be broken and new bonds will be formed right here. Now if the reactants right here, this enzyme, if they don't have enough energy, they will be unchanged after the collision. So they have to make sure there's enough energy. So enzymes provide a site where reactants can be brought together to react. Such a site reduces the energy needed for the reaction. And so the reactants of the enzyme catalyzed reactions are known as substrates. So you want to look at an enzyme as like a lock to a key. There are certain enzymes that are not going to work on particular substances because they don't fit those particular substances. So they have to actually physically fit and actually um, kind of like be welded to those different substances, if you will, because um, keys have to have a certain shape in order to fit in certain um, doorknobs. So the same thing with enzymes, they have a lock and key type of relationship. So enzymes bind the substrate at the active site. And then you have your enzyme substrate complex. So your substrate reacts to form your products. So the substrates will bind to the site on the enzyme called the active site, and then the active site and the substrates have complementary shapes, as you can see here. And so the fit is so precise that the active site and the substrates are often compared to a lock and a key. Last but not least, your last step is your products. So this is what's happening whenever you're eating your food. And remember I told you that digestion starts in your mouth, okay, before you even start to chew. That is when the chemical reactions are starting. So you have an enzyme called amylase that is actually in your mouth that's actually breaking down starches, complex starches. Now they don't do this for every single starch. They only do this for certain starches. So amylase will only work with uh, those complex carbs and starches in your mouth. And then it will work to break them down into their simplest form so that you can digest them. All right, now what happens when, you know, an enzyme cannot work anymore? Now the activity of an enzyme can be affected either by temperature, by pH, or salinity, how salty the solution is that the enzyme is in. So if a temperature is too high for a certain enzyme, they will become denatured or they'll change their shape and they won't work. And remember that I told you that the pH has to be closer to seven within most organisms or closer to their overall pH in their body in order for certain enzymes to work. If the pH is too high or low, you will denature or change the shape of that enzyme. You will warp the shape of that enzyme and therefore it won't fit its substrates any more, longer. So once an enzyme is denatured, it loses its catalytic activity. Ms. Taylor, please report to the front office. Ms. Taylor, to the front office. <laughs> 
So just if a key, uh, when those grooves and on the key starts to warp, they won't fit inside of a certain lock anymore. You'll either have to jiggle it or if you have to move it around or you have to bend it in a certain way or you just have to get a new key altogether. This is kind of the same thing that happens to enzymes whenever the environment is not conducive for that enzyme to perform its catalytic activity. So most enzymes uh, produced by human cells generally work best or close to 37 degrees Celsius, which is the normal temperature of the human body. They typically uh, work best in certain pH values. So you have some enzymes in the human body that will only participate or start working in their activities around six or eight with pH of eight, but most of them uh, like a pH of around seven. For example, you have an enzyme called pepsin that's in your stomach, and it typically doesn't work unless it's in extremely, extremely acidic conditions because your stomach is extremely acidic. So that's the only time that pepsin will actually to work, start to work. So this is what happens uh, when you cook eggs. So I told you that the yolk of the chicken egg is mostly the cholesterol, but the whites of the eggs, the whites of the eggs is actually where most of your proteins are. So when you're actually frying eggs in a frying pan, you're denaturing the proteins and you're making them clump up together. You're actually changing the shape of those proteins and you can never actually make them go back to that shape. All right, so here is a summary for you. Um, just a quick reminder, you can either write this in your notes or um, you can write them on the back or somewhere on that page where these notes are supposed to go. Remember that anything that ends in ose is a carb, anything that ends in saccharide is a sugar, anything that ends in ace is an enzyme. So enzymes are special proteins that speed up chemical reactions. An example is amylase that is in your saliva to help break down starches in your food. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy required. So each type of enzyme has a specific function and can be denatured under certain circumstances. So pH, salinity, the concentration, of course, if you have more enzymes in a certain area of the body, then of course they're gonna work a lot faster. So I added concentration in there. And also the temperature. Going back to the eggs example, if you have too high of a temperature, um, a pH that is not under control, uh, too much of a salty environment, or you don't, you have too few enzymes in a given area, then that will actually um, denature or stop the change the shape of the protein to actually stop them from working. I have a little song that I usually teach my students called the Enzyme Song, and so it's more of a poem, and so it pretty much goes like this. Enzymes function as catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions. All enzymes are proteins. Enzymes are reusable. Enzymes are not permanently changed in a reaction. And so this is just a quick little song or poem that will kind of help you remember what's the job of an enzyme and what it does. Last but not least, um, I was gonna show this video, but you can find it online. It's called Dirty Jobs, and there are actually cows that are fistulated. They pretty much have a way to actually access their stomach or a hole in their stomach. And that way, um, farmers can actually assess, you know, the health of that particular cow. And they can actually study that cow and see, you know, how their stomachs are working. So we know that uh, cows have, I think, from three to four different compartments in their stomachs. And their enzymes in their stomachs are totally different from the enzymes that are in, let's say, human stomachs. So therefore, they can eat certain things that we humans cannot. So cellulose, which is nothing more than fiber. So make sure that you write this down in your notes. Cellulose is fiber or plant fiber. And it is a carb. But it has a, a different chemical structure than starch. And is only digestible by certain types of animals. And cows are those um, organisms that actually can break down cellulose within their stomachs. And that's because they have different enzymes in their stomachs, other, you know, different from what we have. So if you would like to um, watch this video, it's at, I think it's on YouTube, Dirty Jobs, um, you actually can see the inside of a cow's stomach. 
and how they actually eat and you know how they actually how the enzymes actually break down the uh, the grass that they're eating and so this is your lesson on enzymes uh, I would like for you to write this in your notebook and you don't have to sing it for me but you can sing it to yourself as a review song so thank you so much and I'll see you guys on my